Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video I'm going to take a look at one of the most controversial and one of the most effective decks in the Witchwood metagame, which is Quest Rogue. Quest Rogue is a deck that really kills control decks. It's very, very good at destroying, completely demolishing slow decks, but its traditional problem has been aggro. However, it has some nice tools to deal with aggro decks as well, making it overall very powerful right now. Quest Rogue, as the name implies, is built around the Rogue Quest, the caverns below, which is quest to play 5 minions of the same name, and the reward is Crystal Core, which gives you an aura that makes all of your minions for the rest of the game be 5-5 five, five minions. In short, the Quest Rogue game plan is to bounce and copy minions so that it's able to play five minions of the same name, complete the quest, it gets the quest card which is a five mana spell, play the quest card which then turns everything permanently into five fives, and then use a combination of board control or bounces, vanishes and charge minions to push lethal damage and win the game. Quest Rogue only uses one new card from the Witchwood expansion, which is the Vicious Scale Hide, but that's a very important card. Two mana lifesteal Rush Beast. So what this means is that Quest Rogue now has a means to heal itself, which is something it has never been able to do before. Before the Witchwood, if you got Quest Rogue low as an aggressive deck, then they completed the quest and they usually needed one or two more turns to kill you, and you had that time to put in the final damage and win the game. That's not the case anymore. Once Quest Rogue completes the quest, the scale hides come out and they will rush at any minions on the board and they will heal the Quest Rogue and the Quest Rogue is stabilized and ready to roll on with the 5-5s. Five the combination of Visa scale hide and the standard rotation that lowered the overall power of the decks has made Quest Rogue very relevant again. In the late Kobolds and Catacombs meta, Quest Rogue was a tournament deck. It was part of specific lineups meant to snipe certain matchups, but it couldn't really find a foothold on the ladder. Now, it has become a much bigger threat on the ladder as well. There are a couple of ways the Quest Rogue is able to complete the quest. The cards you have that allow you to do that are Shadow Step, which returns a friendly minion to your hand at lower cost. Then there's Youthful Brewmaster, which returns a friendly minion to your hand. There's Soul of the Gorgon, which makes a copy of a friendly minion. There's Vanish, which returns all minions to the owner's hands, so including your own minions so that you can play those again. And most importantly, there is Sonia Shadow Dancer. The importance of Sonia Shadow Dancer cannot be overstated. For example, let's say the opponent has the board. You have seven mana, so you play Sonia Shadow Dancer. You play four Stone Dusk Boars on the same turn from the copies that Sonia gives you. You deal four damage to that board, and you have the fifth Stone Dusk Boar in hand so that you can complete the quest next turn. Or maybe you do Sonia stuff earlier, then you Shadow Step Sonia back into your hand. Now Sonia costs only one mana, and you can even more easily combo it with other cards. Sonia is the true superstar of this deck. There are some instances where the game goes really long, and there might be another superstar as well. Because this deck features Valera the Hollow, this is Rage's build by the way. And if you can combine Valera the Hollow and Zola the Gorgon, then you can play a minion, you can make a Zola copy of that back into your hand, and then you can use the Valera the Hollow copy of Zola to make a copy of Zola back into your hand. So you have infinite number of 5-5 five, five minions once you have become the Death Knight. In practice, however, I find that this kind of combos are rarely needed. Quest Rogue is usually more than capable of winning games without Valera the Hollow. Other than just the pure copying, you also want to have card draw in this deck. And you have Novice Engineer, which is also, by the way, an excellent bounce and copy target. Excellent way to complete the quest because then you keep drawing at the same time. And you also have Fan of Knives, which is an anti paladin deck together with some card draw. Mimic Pod, which is card draw and sometimes also can help you copy things. And there's the Elven Minstrel, which helps you also draw more cards, but the Elven Minstrel is something you don't want to use to complete the quest itself. Furthermore, the deck has some defensive tools in the shape of Glacial Shard, which can freeze opponents. And you can also bounce Glacial Shards to complete your quest and keep freezing stuff so no one can attack you and you advance your quest, that's pretty sweet. And there's Wax Elemental 
which is a nice minion to take some of the early punishment away. And after the quest is done, it becomes a 5 5 taunt with Divine Shield, so then it can stop a lot of hurt. Even though the stats of Quest Rogue's minions cannot be changed by silencing them after the quest has been completed, Silence can take away the Divine Shield and the taunt, so you're not invulnerable if you're sitting behind a Wax Elemental. One of the most common ways this deck actually wins a game after completing the quest is with charge minions. So you have South Sea deck hand and you have Stone Dusk War. And you can combine these with bounce effects that you have left over after the quest, or you might even combine them with Vanish. So you can combine them with Prep Vanish even. So if there's an empty board, you play a couple of these minions on the board, you Prep Vanish, you play them again, you get to hit a lot of damage to face. To be exact, that's going to be 36 damage from the minions and the dagger if you have them all available. So there's some really serious burst capabilities in Quest Rogue. What about the mulligan? How do you mulligan with this deck? This is a quest deck that always keeps the quest. There are many quest decks that mulligan the quest way in some matchups, but Quest Rogue really lives with the quest. You always keep that one. Another card you always keep is Sonia Shadow Dancer. It is simply the best card in the deck. It allows so many ways to complete the quest or to survive, it's just incredible. Also the other early game bounce and card draw effects are cards that you can keep in any matchup. There's Shadow Step, there's Novice Engineer and there's Youthful Brewmaster. Excellent cards in any matchup. When you're facing aggro, you also want to look for some defensive tools. So you can look for stuff like Wax Elemental, Glacial Shard, Vicious Scale Hide. Fan of knives if you're up against a token deck. Whereas if you're up against control decks, you want that power, you want Elven Minstrel, you want Mimic Pod. Against specific matchups like Warlock, you might even keep a Vanish already, planning up ahead. There are lots of synergies in the deck, and keeping cards that fit together and give you the plan on how you are going to complete your quest in this particular game and how you then proceed to kill your opponent is the key. It's a deck many people love, it's a deck many people hate, but playing it can be challenging. When you don't draw that Shadow Step Novice Engineer opener or something crazy like that, then there are actually quite a lot of decisions to make when playing Quest Rogue, and it's a really challenging deck to play. As always, I've prepared some of that gameplay material for you to check out, and if you enjoyed this content, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more. And now, let's go complete some quests. I'm going to keep the caverns and I'm going to keep the engineer. I tend to keep all the draw and bounce type of effects playing this deck. We'll see where we end up. My anti-paladin deck is not going to prove useful in this matchup most likely. Then again, with Dark Onyx, you never know what he's playing. Because he can be playing some funky decks. I can be playing some fun funky decks too. But not today. Do I even hit into that? I guess I won't. I don't want to spend the coin either. Although this does open the way for a powered shield. He's going aggressive, which is as it should be. I have a few options here. I mean, I can coin, I can use a deck and to try to take away some of this pressure. I can also coin Minstrel, or I can simply play Novice Engineer and coin Brewmaster on it. And there's a bunch of ways. A bunch of ways I can go about this, and I think I'm going to go with the coin Minstrel line. Let's draw some cards, see what this is all going to be. He's choosing the right strategy here, which is to go aggressive, even if his deck doesn't support the strategy optimally. I believe from the look of this it looks like a Mind Blast Priest to me. So maybe he's just trying the most common build now, or maybe there is a Dark Onyxie twist to it really difficult to tell yet. Okay, okay. So far this is fine. Let's play an obvious engineer and bounce it back. And I will get another tree two on the board. Oh, when I bounce 
draws that fellow back to my hand. I will have a tree two on the board, challenging his tree for a little bit. Alright, get some card draw. Oh, there is some attraction to playing fan here. How much pressure am I under? Do I need to deal with the pyromancer? Some key questions. I could also just play the novice engineer and Zola. Get some more of that stuff going. If I dagger up, I have quite a few options here indeed. I think I'll go with the novice engineer still. Let's look for more ways to deal with this. And so let it back to my hand. Alright. Nine cards in hand. This is fine. This is fine. I mean, if he finds a couple of mind blasts, he can just rush me down before the quest is completed, perhaps. I have the live steel beasts here. So. They provide me with one avenue of dealing with many things. Okay. Well, that's all cool. Do the fight with the novices. I could play fan and trade. Then I would have a little bit of mana left. So I could dagger down the cleric, for example. That would leave the guys alive. How do I complete my quest the fastest? I need to play another tree novice and so I have everything I need to complete the quest in hand. That's the thing here. Ten cards, so I suppose I have pan. And I'll trade away the pyromancer. And I'm going to dagger down that one. But I think I try to protect myself a little bit with the wax elemental. I think this is the correct line. I'd need another two turns for the quest. But if he can find enough mind blasts, he can just kill me before that. Okay. Ten cards again. Need to be careful not to burn the quest as well. So we go to 3 out of 5. And we bounce that one back, right? Yeah, we're bouncing that one back. And then we go to 4 out of 5. If he has 2 mind blasts in hand, he can kill me. And then I need to... Do I need to prep a sap to play around double mind blast? That means I can't prep the quest. That should be fine. I'll prep the sap so that I cannot be killed with mind blasts this turn. He can play stuff like Dusk Breaker. I get the quest next turn, but I, now I can't prep it. Okay. Then we can get the quest done. And I can play the quest. But I cannot lifesteal yet. So I complete the quest. Does he have lethal next turn? Two mind blasts. Two mind blasts is lethal. Playing the scale heights without having the quest doesn't really change that. So I need to do just this. Then one of these fellows will trade there. While the others push face. 
doesn't have any charges, so playing the Max Elemental doesn't do anything. Now if he has double Mind Blast, he kills me. Let's see if he has that double Mind Blast. I played around it as well as I could. But obviously I knew that double Mind Blast would be lethal. He had the double Mind Blast from the start. Pretty close game. Vanish doesn't really help against all the Chargers. Fan might help. Let's try with these. These fellows, they enjoy their aggro decks. None will survive. Sharpen, who do you think has the most value in the current meta again or Baku? I mean, you don't, you have no clue yet. There's no way anyone has any clue yet. Both seem to have several decks that are performing pretty well. So there's going to be the 2-1 that gives attack the Eggers veteran, yes. Figured as much. I need to start by hitting there. I need to fan next turn to stop this early attack. I believe in the even shaman memes. Yeah. Those are some good memes, right? I have the alternative to just play Wax Elemental and the Scale Hide. Actually, I don't think that's quite okay. Let's do that. Hit here. Get a Scale Hide up. The life still a little bit. And get a Taunt with Divine Shield up. And now I don't have to sacrifice the Scale Hide. I can play Fan. To kill one health minions, for example. Like these fellows here, they can be fanned down. Other alternatives, no really good ones. It's fan time. This one's going face. He also heals me up for one. Is he going to have a second Unleash in hand? That is extremely unlikely. He's only 7 cards deep into his deck. If he has weapon I could prevent that with a Glacial Shard. I think I'll try the Glacial Shard here. So this prevents any weapon plays right now. Second Unleash can obviously clear the entire board. And he would like to kill the Lifesteal minion. But we'll see. Other than that, the Wax Elemental is so far protecting me. If I could find a bounce effect, I would bounce the Wax Elemental back and then play it again. Freezing his face means that that gives the Wax Elemental the maximum chance to live, in case there is nothing that charges, because a weapon cannot kill it now. And bouncing back that Divine Shield that taunt, replenishing the Divine Shield would be a relatively strong strategy. That was a very early Unleash though, so maybe he has another. Because why would he Unleash... Un why would he Unleash on Tree if he didn't have another? Yeah, he had two. I was a little bit scared of this, but there was no real way for me to play around it either. Don't need to just Mimic Pot and Dagger. I think I do. Let's see what the pod holds. It holds some glacial shards, which is nice. I want to kill the beast because I don't want to take additional damage in case he has a kill command in hand. Now I don't have now I don't have a taunt minion available immediately. So there can be charge minions coming. I've already lost one scale hide, which is my only means of healing. That Sonya isn't that bad. How all in do I go with the glacial shards? That's novice. Unleashes are gone. So I can go wide now. Max elemental. I'm going to freeze everything. Then 
there are no risks involved with going wide right now. So I can also play the deck hand. Yeah, with both unleashes gone, I can play the deck hand too. Start to put a little bit of clock on him. Next turn I'm playing the Sonia. And then I'm attacking the Glacial Shards into his minions. I hope there will be more minions than one. Because then I could get enough Glacial Shards to complete the quest. And then I just try to freeze everything, kill minions, get the quest done, rush him down. But we might also end up dying. So we'll see how this goes. And there are more than one minion. That is excellent news. That is excellent news. Because now it's time to play Sonia, the Shadow Dancer. And then I want I want to kill the beast. Hit there, hit there, hit there. Because beast gives his other stuff more use. So I want to kill the beast. I guess I want to kill the wolf rider too. And then I want to freeze his face. And I want to freeze... I can actually kill everything here, right? I was a bit slow there. But okay, either he kill he has lethal now or I get to heal up with the scale hide. He doesn't have lethal. Do I have lethal? No, I don't. That's 25. Actually, yes, I do. Of course I do. I don't need to heal up. I can even prep the crystal core. But this is just lethal. Yeah, so I, I actually don't need to heal up with the scale hide. This is fine. Nice. Minister is too expensive to keep in this matchup. Bounce effect I do keep. Now I can prep the quest on one so I don't have to spend that mana. I can spend that mana on something else. 200 IQ. Oh wait, no, that's not. That's totally not what we're going to do. Elven Minstrel, I just told you to stay back. Why did you come back? I mean... These youngsters nowadays. Alright, we dagger up and we hit on the divine shield. Next turn, the recruit spam begins. We might also play something else. Well, not really, no. Argent Square Righteous Protector. Dire Mole Righteous Protector. But this is the most likely thing to happen. Do I start bouncing wax elementals? That doesn't seem to make sense. I really wonder about this. I'll, I'll just do it like this. Let's see if the wax elemental survives. I mean, simple raid leader kills it. And he might have that. So maybe, maybe that was not correct. I'm so close to pulling off something with Sonia, but on the other hand, so far away. If I play Sonia, Deckhand, Deckhand kills the Raid Leader, I dagger down a Recruit. That leaves the Sonia exposed. He has one damage on board, he needs another. How is he going to get that other piece of damage? From Maul. If Sonya lives, then that's GG. 
do I go for that? I actually think I will try. I'll take a bit of a chance here. Let's see, I'll take a bit of a chance here. Let's see what happens. Because if he can't kill Sonya now, then he loses. But obviously I think he has a pretty decent chance to be able to kill it. But let's... Oh. Well, that works too. Fine. That works too. Although I can always bounce, bounce Sonya back if I like. So there's that. I think I'm going to bounce it back. Fan of knives. Yeah, but I'm, all I'm getting is these preps. I only have three deckhands if I bounce that, but I think I'm bouncing the Sonya back. Sonya's going to take a value trade here. And then it's going to return to my hand. Yes, I believe in this. Then I'm going to kill this one. And dagger up. But this gives me three more deckhands next turn. That's still not quite enough. That was snap pick. Did he find Tarim? I hate it when they find Tarim. But there's a Brewmaster. But if he has Tarim, well... I have to go with the Sonya, right? Sonya would be so good after the quest too, but I think this has got to be the play. We play the Sonya. I can actually complete... No, I can't complete the quest. This one, this one hits there. Then I start playing these deckhand copies. Which will kill a lot of stuff here. kill one with the dagger too. Okay, this means that next turn I have the quest completion and then I can prep out the quest. The already has one taunt minion out there. We'll see. And he gets a lot of stuff here. A lot of stuff, it seems. Oh no, if there's something like a Tyrion coming, then that's going to be so huge. I need to play the deck, and so I get the quest. This gives me the quest. And I'm always going to prep the quest here. The big question is, is this going to be enough? Because he has so much stuff. And he has two taunt minions from Stonehill, so he can have stuff like Tarim and nasty things out there. I think I need to kill as many of these as possible, right? Because the other option is to play the Elven Minstrel. Nine plus six, fifteen. I have to play the Elven Minstrel. Alright. He has 15 on board. That doesn't kill me with Tarim yet. I have Scale Hide Brewmaster. So I can heal for 10 next turn. He plays level up. Alright. But I'm healing for 10. So he pushes a bunch of damage, but I'm also healing a lot here. This is not the end. This is so not the end. Because now we go scale hide. And scale hide kills one of these. Then we go shadow step on the scale hide. 
and we go scale hide and we kill another one of these and then we go brewmaster on the scale hide and then we go scale hide and we kill another one of these and then we kill that one and then we kill that one and then we play a 5-5 five, five taunt with divine shield and life is suddenly looking much much better for me he still has two taunts from stonehill okay he gets some shaman spells that's all sweet and everything two shaman spells need to be careful with those I can prep the Mimic Pod. I could play multiple Mimic Pods with Valera later. But I think I still want my Dagger, maybe. Let's prep the Mimic Pod now. That's a couple of Shadow Steps. That's interesting. Because I can kill the Witch's Cauldron here. I'm always going to Shadow Step this one, though. I'm going to Shadow Step Minstrel too, right? Minstrel kills that one. I'll Shadow Step the Minstrel. I want to replay the Minstrel. Let's replay the Minstrel. We're almost there, we're almost there. Let's kill that one, let's kill that one. Let's dagger down this one. Let's Shadow Step that one, play this one. And I would like to play that. Can I do it? Can I do it? I can do it. There. I might have been able to set up for lethal next turn. I think this might have been a poor turn. I was pretty lucky with the draws. I, I was a little bit hesitant about second shadow step actually. That may have been a mistake. Do I have lethal? Is the question. And right now I do not. And yeah, this is no lethal. I want to get rid of the Tarim. He still has another taunt. Minstrels are a bit expensive. I think I want to kill the Tarim. Then I want to banish. Then I want to dagger. Do I have enough time? Do I have enough time? I ran out of time. Oh, no, I didn't run out of time. I had just enough time. I keep the quest, I keep the bounce. I want to find some good bounce minions. It's a spiteful druid again. Last time we were barely able to take it. I'm not sure how lucky we're going to be this time. A surprising success to Even Sham with the Witch. Yeah, lots of people have been telling that Even Sham is good. I haven't tried that yet. In theory, crafting phase, I really couldn't figure out how it's supposed to be good. But apparently, it might be. I think I'm just equipping the dagger now. So I have four, up to four deck hands in my hand right now. Of course, they can't hit. They can't actually hit any enemy targets. The spiteful druid drew a little bit poorly. Well, a little bit. He didn't have a turn to play, but he kept that card. So there could be a spiteful summoner coming on six, which could be enough to kill me. I'm actually uncertain whether I should even try to kill this firefly. I would also try to just bounce the novice engineers. I could try to do the quest with the novice engineer too. Let's try this one. Do I, ta I take that damage right? Yeah, I believe so. Seven cards in hand. 
Let's see. I didn't want to give him those mana crystals yet. I don't want him to have early. I don't want him to have early. Spiteful summoner. I need to find a vanish. Somehow I need to find a vanish. Next turn he can grab the mana crystal, but it's okay. He will be at 6 mana anyway on that turn, so... That is not going to matter. I just can't kill it, this one this turn. Now I have the option to prep Mimic Pod. 8 cards in hand. Back to 8 cards in hand. I'll prep the Mimic Pod. Let's see what I can find from that one. I can find some Vanishes. Those are sweet. About Zola this now. Eight cards in hand, that's acceptable. Need to find a couple more novice engineers. Need to have enough health that the Vanishes will buy me enough time. Everything to face? Whoa. That is scary stuff. I have nine cards in hand. But I could coin vanish on this board, right? Then I will still be at 9 cards in hand. Next turn I will complete the quest. If I simply fan, that doesn't do enough. But he can rebuild pretty well next turn with 6 mana though. Well, Spiteful Summoner is going to set up for potential lethal. Then I will have to vanish again. I have to coin vanish. You will get two Saronite chain gangs in hand too. I need to coin the vanish. I'll be at nine cards. My hand overflows. But he can replay a big bunch of stuff. I'm not at all sure how this is going to turn out. I actually don't have the quest completion next turn. I need to charge this one down. We'll go to 3 out of 5. Oh, that fellow's a nice one. I think I need to play the deckhand here. Could I just go for an OTK? I suppose that could be possible. But I have to survive too. So the deckhand will trade. But I'll freeze the scale dame. And I'll bounce back the novice engineer. Eight cards in hand. Next turn I can play novice novice prep quest. If anything leaves on the board. That's a good choice to kill. Always a good one, means that I can't keep freezing. Oh, that's really good. So now he has... He has 14 on board. So I'm dead on board if I go with the novice novice prep quest. I can't go with that. I have to do something else. What is that something else? What if I prep Vanish and play Novice Novice? Nine cards. It looks like prep Vanish Novice Novice turn. That will give him the Glacial Shard. No, Glacial Shard will burn. So he doesn't get the freeze back. It's the prep Vanish. Prep Vanish. Eight cards in hand. Novice. Novice. We have the quest. I don't have any scale hides. That was a good burn. That was a really good burn. 
I don't have any scale hides to defend. I'm out of preps. I will have three men after the crystal core. He will hero power down one of the novice engineers every time here. Because he wants to prevent it from becoming a 5-5. Five, five. But what can he build in addition to that? I still have the boars left in the deck, so I have some charge stuff coming. Scalebane is not very strong, right? I don't think that's strong enough. My nice shadow step 2. So now I'll play the quest and I will have 3 mana left over. First I play the quest every time, I have no preps anyway. The novice engineer can trade away the scale bane. That's I don't have a lethal setup. How much do I have? I can bounce one, two, three times. So this fellow is going to trade. This fellow is always going to trade here. And I will go with the deck hand to kill the other one. Deckhand will kill this one to protect my life total. And I can bounce the deckhand back with the brewmaster. So I have 8 cards in hand, I have a 5-5 five, five on board. Psyker just started using your even paladin today. Nice. I really enjoyed playing that. It's a bit poor against Warlock, but I build it for... I build it to beat paladins mostly. So, there are some other builds that are better against Warlock, but not many that are that great against Paladin. But I'm still at 11, how is he going to win this? And he has no board clears. I would like to get the scale heights anyway. So if I play these for 5 mana... I have enough mea. It's going to be that line. Right, how many cards do I have? 9 cards in hand. So I start with the taunt. I continue with the minstrel. I try to look for the scale hides. I find a scale hide. I'm going to play a scale hide. Scale hide will heal me up a little bit here. Do I need to heal up more? Or is 16 safe enough? I think I feel pretty safe at 16. I want to set up so that I can kill him from hand. So I'm not bouncing anything here. I'm just playing a novice engineer. This looks good to me. Now there's 25 on board. And I have 15 from hand. I don't have a sap and he could have like ultimate infestation takes him to 40 I have exactly little if he plays ultimate infestation he can play some taunts though yeah those are some nice taunts those are a lot of taunts fine then I need to stop pushing into the taunts it's fine it's fine I don't mind he has Primordial Drakes there, right? So some of these minions will become vulnerable. I'll trade here. I'll trade there. I'll trade here. I'll trade here. I'll trade there. I can start pushing some face damage here as well. While I'm doing this. I was too slow to equip the dagger. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm slow. Primordial Drake doesn't kill a single minion from this board now. Well, he can kill the wax elemental if he hero powers. Nah, but he can have the mind control decks. Maybe this was still incorrect. Maybe this was still incorrect.
And I might have a problem in that I can't kill off my minions, because that means I can't bounce my minions as effectively. I need to push another 20 damage into these. He still has the Primordial Drake. And that's awkward. Zola. Yeah, there is Zola, of course, but... I start killing these off, right? Not the least meaningful minions. Then I'll make a solar copy of the deck and so that I can have a charge minion next turn too. Right? I mean Maybe there was a way to have lethal already. I just didn't figure that out. Warriors of the frozen wastes. But yeah, that is so not an answer he's dead on board. I have Sonya, I have a charger. That's always a very, very attractive combo. Let's see. Here come the caverns. If I can find a couple of bounces on this and then I can finish it up with Sonya and bouncing this, that's the plan. Oh, but he's a combo priest and he wants to kill me right now. No! No, don't kill me right now. I want to live. You think that is useless? Yeah, this might be a short game. Currently this looks like a very, very short game. Giving him more cards with the fan. Oh, I don't like any of my options. Two Divine Spirits and an Inner Fire and that's game. But how do you even play around that? I can't use the Vanish yet. I think I have to wait a little bit, but I can't use the fan either because I can't give him additional cards. I mean, if he has two Divine Spirits and an Inner Fire here, he has the game. Does Serenite King Battlecry activate Rogue Quest? No, summoned minions don't count, only played minions. It's play five minions. Well, that inner fire was only from Shadow Visions. Pass and go poor, prep vanish. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I know I have to vanish this eventually. But I just couldn't do it yet, because that would not have given me anything. Is yeah, it's going to be poor, prep vanish. It has to be. But I think I want to use the boar rather than the deck, and board is not dependent on whether I have a dagger or not. Deck hand hits for two on the first hit. I still get, think it has to be boar. Let's see, let's see. I need to play another four boars. I can get three from Sonia. Right now, this turn. Yeah, I'm going to use those. I'm actually going to use those. So it's Sonia, Boar, and coin more Boars. Three Boars. Takes the quest to four out of five, and it completes next turn with another Boar. And it kills the Radiant Elemental right here, right now. Alright, here we go. Boar number one. Boar number two. Boar number three. And then we see what happens. Then we see what happens. Next turn I can play Boar into the quest and make Boar and Sonya firefives, if Sonya happens to live. 
which is obviously unlikely. Sonia doesn't live. He might be able to find lethal. I need to kill all of his minions right so that he can't buff them up. Double Divine Spirit. He has spent one Shadow Visions already. That's an upside. I think this is boring quest. And I kill off the Cleric. Let's try to stop some of that card draw. He has been able to draw a lot of cards though. He's six cards deeper in this deck than I am. I have the Glacial Shard. I don't have any bones, he's here. He gets another couple of draws from that. He has one inner fire left, and he has the Divine Spirits left. He can also heal up the Pyromancer. He can also potentially silence his own minion and then buff it up. Okay, so far this is looking alright. Now it's looking a little bit better even. Because now I can go scale, hide, and brew master and clear this board and heal to 30. I can kill the second Radiant Elemental. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.